Hi there, it's Ernest from Trip Astute. In this video, we're discussing how to travel with a drone and some things to keep in mind to avoid getting in trouble. Drones are an awesome tool when it comes to capturing footage while traveling. We've been using our drone more frequently when traveling and have been excited about the footage that we can capture. Though when I first started using a drone, I have to admit that I was really nervous about traveling with it. I kept worrying that it would get confiscated or even worse, I would end up in a foreign jail for violating some rules. In this video, I wanted to share some tips on traveling with a drone. These are some practical things to consider when you plan to travel with your unmanned aircraft. So let's run through the list. Number one, check and follow local laws. Some places are notoriously strict about flying drones and will even confiscate them at the airport. Your best bet is to look online and also in specific forums where people have shared their experience. I'll include some links in the video description. Also, check to see if your destination country has any apps to help. When I visited England, they had a free app that helped to identify uh, restricted areas and it seemed to be more up to date than some of the US-based airspace apps. If you plan to take your drone on a cruise ship, be aware that most cruises prohibit drones from being brought on board. Some friends of mine recently went on a cruise through the Caribbean and they had their drone confiscated by the cruise ship during their trip. So definitely check the rules before you go. Number two, keep your drone and batteries in your carry-on bag. You wanna make sure to keep your drone and batteries in your carry-on bag when traveling on planes. Since drones typically use lithium polymer or LiPo batteries, they cannot be in your checked-in luggage due to the risk of fire. Number three, use a LiPo bag. This isn't a requirement, but it's more of a best practice when traveling with LiPo batteries. The bags are meant to contain any fire that could occur from your battery. It's also recommended that your batteries be discharged to 50% or less when traveling. That's difficult to do, so my recommendation is to get a LiPo bag and use it when flying. The chance of your battery catching on fire is low, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. Plus, if your drone gets scrutinized at the airport, I think it helps to show good intention and responsibility with the LiPo bag. Number four, take out your batteries during airport security. The batteries are likely to cause the most concern when traveling, so it helps to have it out when going through the security screening. Number five, load updates and maps at the hotel. There's nothing worse than getting ready to fly your drone and realizing that you need to update the latest firmware. And what's even worse is getting that message when you don't have a fast and reliable internet connection. My recommendation is to boot up your drone in your hotel before starting your day and ensuring that you have the latest firmware loaded. Also, know that you may have to try it with every battery as some firmware updates get loaded to the batteries. Number six, be discreet and respectful. There are a lot of negative feelings toward drone operators and sadly, a lot of it is based on people flying drones in inappropriate places. My advice is to avoid crowds and try not to gather attention toward yourself. And be considerate to those who may not wanna hear you flying your drone overhead. A tip that I recommend is to also fly early in the morning if you wanna fly in a place that's popular with tourists. It will avoid gathering a lot of attention and at the same time, you might actually get some really cool shots of the sunrise. Number seven. Be cautious of extreme weather. Cold weather can really affect the performance of your drone, especially when it comes to the batteries. If you plan to fly in cold weather, you may wanna warm the battery beforehand or allow the drone to hover to warm up before going full throttle on the controls. Hot and humid weather can also cause your drone to overheat. So be mindful of the temperature and know that weather can change the way your drone will lift and fly. Also, while flying in conditions like fog may seem like a great opportunity to capture footage, it can cause a lot of moisture to build up on and inside your drone, not to mention limit your ability to see your drone while flying. So be really careful. Number eight, stay focused. One of the biggest distractions when flying a drone is to have people ask questions. A lot of times people will wanna ask you questions or engage you in a conversation while in flight. I recommend keeping your eyes on your drone and controls and ask to speak to the person after you land. Keeping line of sight 
of your drone is not only good practice, but it's law in most places, so make sure you maintain your focus while flying. Number nine, practice flying and master controls before traveling. I highly recommend getting comfortable with the drone before attempting to fly it during your vacation. You wanna have a strong understanding of the controls before launching it in situations where things may be less predictable or comfortable. Number 10, pick a clear and open spot to fly. There have been so many times where I wanted to fly my drone, but I either couldn't get enough GPS satellites or there were just too many hazards nearby, like trees. When selecting a place to fly your drone, take the time to examine options. I recommend flying from open places to reduce the chance of hitting an object or losing signal. One thing to add though, is to be extremely careful when flying over water. If you plan to fly from a moving home point, like a boat, set your home point to update to your location rather than the starting point and give yourself plenty of extra time. Landing on a boat is extremely tricky, so I would not recommend it unless you have some experience doing it. Number 11, consider using a landing pad. This is something that I recently found extremely useful. Unless you have a smaller drone, like a Spark, that allows you to safely land in your hand, I would suggest using a landing pad. Landing on sand, dirt, or grass can cause long-term damage to the sensitive internals of your drone, especially if the environment is wet. Folding and portable landing pads are cheap and definitely worth carrying with you. Number 12, use a flight checklist to minimize flyaways. Aviators love to use checklists to ensure consistency and routine. I highly recommend using the same technique with your drone, even if you know what you're doing. Things like locking the home point, checking your compass interference, and ensuring that you have enough GPS satellites can save you from having an accidental flyaway. I've posted the checklist that I use when flying on our website as a free download, so feel free to use it on your flights. I honestly use it on every flight, and there have been many times where I've had to cancel my flight plan based on something that I couldn't complete or verify on the checklist. If you do get more serious about drones, I do recommend getting your FAA Part 107 certificate. You don't need it as a hobbyist, but if you want to do any commercial work, then it's definitely required. I just got mine after taking the Drone Pilot Ground School course by UAV Coach. Taking a prep course isn't required to pass, but the course not only helped me to get a 95% on my test, but I actually felt like I learned the concepts being taught. These included things like understanding airspace classifications, weather, reading sectional charts, and even just best practices for flying unmanned aircrafts. Plus, the instructor Alan is very responsive to questions. If you're interested, Alan at UAV Coach has provided our channel with a discount code. Just use TripAstute50 to receive $50 off the prep course. Do you have any tips for traveling with your drone? Or do you have any crazy stories while trying to fly one when abroad? If so, please share your experience below in the comment section. I've included Amazon links to some of the products featured in this video. TripSuit does get a percentage back if you use our link. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it's a great way to support the channel and help us to create more content like this video. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Also, subscribe to our newsletter by visiting our website and signing up. You'll get weekly travel articles, news, and information on giveaways. Until next time, travel safe and travel smart.